What's up guys? So uh, today I'm talking about an Extrema Ratio knife from Italy. This one is the Doberman 4, the South Africa edition. And I'm kind of starting this a little bit different because as you can see the knife is taken apart. I wanted to start off the video like this to show you, you know, the options that it comes with because the South African edition comes with this wood handle, but it also has the original handle, which is on the cheaper model. But I wanted to take it apart and show you that this uh, is not a full tang knife because I know that would be one question in seeing this inside of its handle here. You can see that because it's enclosed, even though there's a little lanyard hole through there, it might be questionable like you know what's that tang look like how far does that go through is it go all the way through and then it just happens to be enclosed you know since it's not exposed I want to expose it myself just to show you so now you know but also with this knife here's the box that came in kind of a brown you know coloration different than all the other boxes but uh, in opening this up you'll see that it also comes with the other handle which is the uh, I think it's four preen four preen something like that but basically it's a synthetic okay I use this knife with the wood handle I never swapped it but I did want to show this since it's an important part of the video let's take it out of the bag here and show you that it also comes with the black um, synthetic handle okay which has a slightly different you know look to it of course and there's a different cutout here on the bottom so here's what it looks like in here all right now because this uh the wood one comes with really nice polished brass hardware they do include the wrench here different hardware we have more of a, a rugged look. So instead of using the brass, which wouldn't make sense on this, we have this kind of like, you know, dull stainless look going on for the, the hardware. In this particular case, you see there's actually two points where it connects, okay, on this, as opposed to just the one that's on the wood handle. So uh, yeah, just something I wanted to point out here. Again, I didn't test this knife with the black handle. I only use the wood, but I didn't want to show that because obviously it's an important option for this knife. All right, so I'm back, knife is together. So as you saw, you know, it gives you a different option to swap it to that black uh, handle with the different hardware. So it's a totally different look. If you wanted to use that knife like that and then, you know, preserve the the nicer wooden handle, you know, with the brass pins to kind of dress it up. Who knows, maybe going to some kind of event or you just want a different look for the knife, you can swap back and forth, which is nice. Uh, the obvious negative to that is that it's not full tank. I can tell you it's plenty strong, you know, because of this uh, design, this is kind of a, a, you know, general purpose fixed blade. I mean, I think they, you know, say it's a hunting style knife. It's not big enough to do like heavy chopping or anything. I did do a little bit of woodwork, making some feather sticks and stuff, but I didn't chop with this. I didn't feel like it was, you know, necessarily designed for that. It is a little bit, you know, too big in my opinion for like an EDC for most people. If you're out in the country or on a farm or something like that, it's really no big deal. There's obviously no, no limit there. Um, but yeah, just kind of a general purpose utility fixed blade. That's how I treated this. Did a lot of cardboard cutting. Like I said, a little bit of woodwork, but not much. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, did carry this for one day just to see how it would carry with the sheath because I really do like this, this leather sheath. So let's put it back in the sheath. So you can see what it looks like here. And we'll talk about it a little bit. So you can see there's one retention strap. I do like this system where we have a little post in the hole. All right, it does... Uh, Retain very nicely. Nice, so you can see, you know, and if you happen to have this upside down or something, there's no way it's going to fall out. It's a nice presentation as well. You can see on the front here, there's a separate pocket, and this has a sharpening stone in it, which is really pushed in here and not needed to use this. All I did was strop it up. But yeah, there's no way that's going to fall out. <laughs> you don't even need that. That flap on the front. All right, so I take the knife out just to get this thing out because it was so jammed in there. But yeah, here's the, uh, the sharpener. Instructions on the back. All right. Um, if you happen to get this directly through uh, Extrema Ratio's website, you do get the free um, sharpener as well as a free engraving, which is nice. I've done that before with their uh, their neck knife. But uh, yeah, it's definitely secure in there. 
don't know if you can tell, but there's some scratching on the back here. That's from the, the back of this hardware, just to, to note that. Although I don't really care, it's something you might, might care about. But uh, yeah, there's no way that thing is coming out uh, on accident. It takes uh, plenty of work to actually get that thing out. And then uh, you also get this, uh, it's kind of random, but pretty cool. You get a Marlin spike on here, okay? Which is retained with this uh, kind of elastic piece here. So it's kind of pressure fit. So when you push this in, it's expanding that. And it's keeping pressure on it. Again, there's no way that's going to accidentally fall out. By the way, all these holes here for like uh, leg retention straps and stuff, it can't, this thing had leather everywhere. It had a lanyard on it. It had these, uh, the leather, you know, thongs hanging off of here. Um, this one, I believe, was longer. I think I cut it. So when you, when you first get this thing, there's these straps everywhere. Of course, you can utilize those if you want, but I took them off right away. Um, I just like a cleaner look here. But yeah, this Marlin spike is kind of a general purpose tool. This one happens to come to an extreme point. And uh, you can use this for anything you would want a very pointy pick for. Uh, more common uses for Marlin spike is for uh, rope work or you know dealing with cordage. If you have a really tight knot, you can get that small tip in there and kind of push it back and forth and loosen up that knot so you can untie it. Um, you can use this because this one's so pointy. You can use this at like an awl. You can poke holes you know in your belt if you need to make a new belt hole. I mean the sky's the limit with this thing, but it is extremely pointy. I don't know how much I can stress that. This would pierce into skin very easily, so obviously be careful, you know, in using this. But uh, it's very nicely done. As far as Marlin spikes go, it's a very, very cool little addition. Kind of random, but pretty cool. I know some people would probably prefer to see like a ferro rod or something in there. Because of the shape here, you can probably get away with doing that. If you wanted to use this in more of a bushcraft style, you can put a, a ferro rod that would fit in there. But yeah, that's the, the sheath system. I really, really do like the sheath. You can see the markings on the back here and the logo. On the bottom, made in Italy. All right, but very cool. So taking a look at the knife itself, you can see it's marked Doberman 4S, S for South Africa, N690. This is sporting a bowler N690 steel. Big Extrema Ratio on the back there, made in Italy. And then I'm assuming the um, you know serial number for this particular model. The only thing is I can't find the uh, the Rockwell. I, I'd really like to know you know what this is actually Rockwelled to because that's important information. And if that joke was a little bit too dry for you, well, oh well. <laughs> 58 Rockwell. I don't know why they felt the need to put it on the blade. I mean, even the back, the extreme ratio being so big there, it's pretty uncommon. Again, you know, that can go either way. I would say the majority of people probably wouldn't like that. It's not super appealing. Um, because of the price on this, which we'll get to in a little bit, you have to consider this to be somewhat of a collectible knife. I don't think a lot of people who own these are actually gonna use them really hard. So it might appeal more as a collectible. And if you consider it to be a collectible knife, although it's very usable, uh, things like that wouldn't be a big deal. In fact, if you're gonna display it, it might be better. I get the, the branding, I get that totally. I don't get this. And I know a lot of people wouldn't like that and you'd probably agree with me. It's unnecessary and it's unsightly. It, it becomes kind of an ugly addition. Um, I know it's kind of, it's not really even boasting because 58 Rockwell is pretty common and particularly it's, it's kind of soft compared to some other steels and stuff. You know, if it was Rockwell to 62 or something, it was a totally different steel and it's like something you want to, you know, kind of boast about or, or show off, then yeah, maybe. And even then I would probably put it little, little somewhere, <laughs> but, uh, it's different. This knife is different in many ways. So although I don't like it, you know, you may feel differently about it. I'm sure you guys will definitely let me know in the comment section. But anyway, that's definitely the elephant in the room. There's no way to miss that. It's just I've never once seen this on any other knife ever. Ever. Uh, not only big, but on the blade. I've never seen the Rockwell actually put on the blade or the handle of a knife ever. And I've been, uh, I've been into knives for 20 plus years now. So it's definitely unique. That could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Just depends on who you are, I guess. Um, so let's talk about some specs real quick here. Uh, the blade is 7.25 inches. There's a drop point. You can see kind of a satin finish on here. Did come very sharp, a little bit of belly up towards the front. It is a very sharp knife. It is a, the N690 is a very usable steel. Um, some people say it's the same as 440C. 
I personally think N N690 is just a little bit better in performance. They're very, very similar in their like molecular structure. You know, if you're looking at as a metallurgist and what actually makes up the components of the steel, um, they are very similar, but they, they're technically different. So uh, I don't know, in my experience, a good heat treated N690 has been fine. Um, Extremer Ratio has used N690, I believe, exclusively in all their knives. I don't know offhand of any models. Maybe they do have a couple that are different, but most of the stuff I've used from them, if not all the things that I've personally used from them, has been N690, and I've had good experiences in the past with it. Comes nice and sharp. With this one, again, never used that sharpening stone or anything, just dropped it up, and it, it held a pretty good edge. Didn't beat this up in the woods or anything. You know, maybe if I were to do some batoning or something like that, um, it would lose that edge a little bit faster, but uh, you know, just kind of general cutting work with this for testing. The uh, handle length is 5.3 inches, and overall it is 12.6 inches. This weighs 11.8 ounces. All right, again, you know, the, the weight is going to vary just a little bit if you're going to throw on that other handle. And again, I think it's called a Forprene. That's just their branding for whatever that you know plastic material is. It is plasticky. Let me grab that again real quick so you can take a look at it. It's a very, you know, hard, durable plastic. It's not rubbery in any sense at all. It is very comfortable. Um, although the wood handle here, you can see, I mean, there's kind of the trademark cutout here on older knives, they do this, and it's, you can easily identify, you know, this brand because of this cutout. Uh, but it is very comfortable. You can see the wood handle here has a lot of extra handle hanging out. You can definitely change your grip here and use this uh, cutout here almost like a, a small finger choil. All right, hand does really lock in. Uh, on the wood one, they have the branding on the back here. It adds actually a little bit of grip. When you choke down, that engraving is kind of grippy. Almost feels like jimping. But uh, yeah, there's just a, a ton of handle here. There is a cutout or a hole drilled down here. So you can use that in addition to the lanyard hole to, to kind of make a, a cord guard if you wanted. Um, but compared to the black handle here, again, the only difference is the second cutout on the bottom. And holding it like this, it's a little bit more secure because of this cutout here. Um, if you were using a little bit harder, maybe you would switch to this one. You know, if nothing else, to preserve the nice wood. So, yeah. That handle, by the way, because, again, this is the South, um, South African version of this knife, having both these handles. But you can get just the Doberman 4 that looks like that. Okay, again, with that other hardware, and it's a cheaper option. The cheaper version of this knife, about 380 bucks, which is expensive as it is. This South African version, it depends on where you're gonna get it. If you're gonna get it direct from Extrema Ratio, the, I believe, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but, because it's in Euro and I have to, you know, figure out the US dollar, uh, you know, exchange rate for the currency, but it's around 700 bucks. $700 is not a cheap knife by any means, if you went on Amazon, you could get a little bit of discount. I saw it for sale for $650. Still extremely expensive. And when you're in that price range, you know, the sky's the limit. There, there's literally thousands of different custom fixed blades you can get, very high-end, you know, semi-production fixed blades from a, a variety of companies, all different flavors, all different styles. You know, when you're talking about a good fixed blade for 60 bucks, maybe you're a little bit more limited. But once you're into the six to seven hundred dollar range, there's a lot of options, a ton of options. So why would you go with this one over something else? I don't know, that's personal choice. Personally, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go pick this one over a lot of different options that are out there. It is expensive. Uh, the first thing that I know people are gonna say, and I, I do agree, is for the price tag, N690 is not the premium steel that they want. I'm using air quotes there because there's nothing wrong with the steel. But in that price range, people are gonna wanna see more exotic steels, a little bit more, um, I don't know, more options there. Uh, of course, again, when you get to that kind of a price range, it's all over the place. You know, a $700 fixed blade, it's not like, okay, all $700 fixed blades have this steel or this steel or whatever. They're all over the place, especially when you're talking about custom makers. They can go anything from like a 440 to D2. I mean, all the different varieties of uh, tool steels out there, uh, some of the super premium steels, the powdered steels. I mean, it's there's no real standard for expensive fixed blades and what they use. However, in that price range, very few are using N690. So it's not necessarily a case of, well, they should have a better steel. This is what the company uses. It just so happens that this particular you know, uh, model 
has that price tag on it. That's the company's choice for whatever reasons, you know? So most people will say, and I can already predict this, is that this is uh, way too overpriced, it should have a better steel, and, and yada, 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 right? Um, what's interesting, though, about this is because that, that, um, that opinion would be so, uh, you know, widely agreed upon, there would be actually very few people who really own this. So then, therefore, it becomes collectible. I guarantee you, watching this video, if you're into knives and stuff, ask all your knife friends, everyone you know, who owns this knife? Who owns the Doberman 4 South African version? Probably very few, if any, if you can ever find anyone. So there, it becomes an exclusive knife for collectors. As far as actually using it, yeah, you could definitely use this, but its performance to me is still on par with, with a lot of different options in like the $50 to $100 range. But, like all knives, if you want this specific look, you want this specific setup, this, you know, um, it's, it's a beautiful knife. It really does look nice. I'm definitely thrown off by the branding that's on there. I would prefer to have completely sterile blades. I mean, maybe down here where it says Made in Italy, or maybe Made in Italy on one side and the other side here, instead of the, the model, I would just like it to say Extreme Ratio. Just small, simple, just what's common. The Rockwell being so big on there is just kind of odd. Um, it's not common commonly seen I like I said I've personally never seen it before um, you know it's just uh, it doesn't appeal to me it would appeal to, to someone else out there but I would think it's the minority but yeah I mean it's totally a great usable knife for you know the 50 to maybe a hundred dollar range and even then you'd have people saying it's overpriced having a price tag of 650 to 700 yeah it's not going to be a popular one by any means but it is certainly interesting very usable knife Overpriced? In this case, yes. I do believe that it is overpriced for what it is. That being said, if you want one, that's the price tag. You're not going to find it anywhere cheaper. Um, so again, therefore, it becomes this exclusive thing that like not many you know knife collectors have. And down the road, when these are long discontinued, whatever, maybe they'll be a little bit more sought after because of that, because uh, availability won't be there. So it's an interesting, interesting thing there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're if you're watching these knife reviews looking for maybe a new knife to get to use, this is definitely not the one. But if you're like a hardcore collector of different knives, this is one that should probably be on your radar because not a lot of people are going to have this. You'll probably never meet another person that ever has it. So another thing that I wanted to uh, mention about their steel choice here, that Bowler N690 is widely available in other countries. Because this is made in Italy, they may have you know, uh, less options as far as steel choices. I know for a fact there are a bunch of companies that are overseas that use Bowler N690 pretty much exclusively because of that, because it's about supply. That's what they can get. That's what makes sense financially for them. So they use it, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine steel. It's just, uh, I think some people, especially when you have a variety of different knives, and especially if you live in the States, in the US, you might be accustomed to having more options for different steels, okay? But keep in mind, being made in Italy, they don't have the same options. So, or if they do have options, it's just the price doesn't make sense to them. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's comfortable. It's, like I said, a kind of a generic design. It's very versatile. It's just a, uh, you know, medium-sized fixed blade. It's very well made. It's just very, 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 very hard to justify that price tag for a lot of different users. Collectors, not so much. A lot of times knife collectors, they get into all kinds of expensive knives for a variety of reasons. But again, if you're the guy looking to, you know, spend part of your, your paycheck this month on a, a new fixed blade, Probably not the one you're going to pick. In my opinion, I think it's really cool that it does come with this, you know, second handle here. However, uh, I do or would prefer if it was scales, you know, and this came with a second set of scales. Or for the price tag, three or four different sets of scales. Some wood scales, some different color, you know, options. Um, but because of the design, it is not, you know, uh, full tang. And if the price tag didn't already turn you off to this style of knife, then perhaps that would. You know, maybe there's a, a, a user out there It's like, yeah, you know, the money's not a big deal to me. I have money, but I'm looking for a very hard use knife and full tang is a must. So that's another a negative to some people uh, about this design. But it is uh, unique enough in that there's no other knife that looks exactly like this. And if you want it, that's the price tag you pay. That's kind of how it works with all hobbies, you know. So that pretty much covers it. Uh, again, usable knife overpriced to most people but i will leave you with this in pretty much any video that i do about knives that are uh, very expensive or some people think they're overpriced uh they wouldn't be making them if people aren't buying them there are owners of this knife and they love it they just happen to uh 
you know, not mind spending that, that type of money on it. So there you go. There's my uh, opinions on the, the Doberman for the South African version. Uh, I think that if you like the design, it is definitely worth looking at the regular Doberman 4 if you don't mind, you know, just this style of handle. I do believe that you get a different sheath, though. I don't think you get this leather sheath um, with the regular Doberman 4. I could be mistaken. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly certain it's not the leather sheath. So those are my opinions, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Take care.